Okay, welcome back. Hello, hello. I just finished that other recording of my prior part seconds ago, and uh, we're starting out once again by going north. You can even tell that not much time has actually passed. Okay, so to that end, normally we would like fight through this violently and blah 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 blah. Nah. Lame it out. Fuck this shit. We going. Now, if you're not sure what I'm doing, last time, as I mentioned, we're on the process of trying to map as much of this area as we possibly can, and to get to where one of my uh, favorite weapons in the series happens to be. And that is the Lucerne, which is on, actually, the other side of the castle. Yeah. I forgot about that. Wolves just magically T-pose out of the sky. Oh boy, this frame rate. Oh boy, this frame rate. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay. Before. Excuse me, sir. Sir, please. Ma'am. This is a family. Your child is running wild. Oh, you're dead. <laughs> Vanquishing an enemy group or planch. This is another new thing. Uh, replenish your flasks. The number and type, it varies. We, we just, we just decided, you know, to fuck it. You cannot replenish more flasks than your maximum allows. So this is a way to try to encourage you to use your flasks quite often. And since mine were already ma maxed out, I didn't actually get anything. Not that it matters, because this thing is right here. Oh yeah. We've already tagged so many of these. Forgive me. I've been testing you to determine... If the Elden Ring would truly I love her hair color, by the way. If you had the metal to endure this long and arduous path. It seems my worries were unfounded. Torrent had your measure from the very start. I was just a I dumb bitch. See? There is but one other thing I can do to offer you guidance. I can take you to the round table hole, gathering place of tarnished champions guided by grace she looks kind of young doesn't she like I know the player character model is always going to be very slightly different but she does look like she's supposed to be I don't know like maybe 15 16 or something it's hard to tell because you know Japan anime youth culture they're obsessed with that sort of thing um, like an anime you can Especially if it's drawn. Uh, a drawn character, you could say that they're 30 years old and I would believe you. You could say that they're 12 years old and I can believe you. It just depends on the art style. And the characters never act like they're actually 8. They never act like they're in their 30s. Everyone is this weird mixture of acting like they're teenagers, but also sort of in their 20s. But they have knowledge that you would have in your 30s sometimes. But they're also ignorant like they're preteens, it never makes any sense. So in video game terms, it's, you sort of get the same thing. Uh, what she is, how old she is, it could be anything. She could be a one million year old dragon and I would have no clue. But physically, yeah, she, to me, she does sort of look like she's maybe in her late teens. Although she could be eight. She could be 24. I have no idea. But anyways, yeah, she... After you, I think the thing that progresses them is uh, tagging enough bonfires, enough of these points of grace, which really just look like buttholes. Like, really. Like, they look like inverse buttholes, where they're, like, sort of prolapsed a little bit, and they have a humanity from Dark Souls 1, except now it's golden. Like, sort of just wafting right out of the butthole, out of the butthole hairs. I don't know, maybe I'm sharing too much with you people. My butthole doesn't look like this, but I don't know what it looks like. I've never investigated, but I can assure you that no one's butthole looks like this. I'm just saying that maybe this world is more fucked up than we realize. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, yeah, let's go to the round the round table. Let's. Very we should probably leave. Rest upon you for but a moment. Take my hand. 
Yeah, I love her hair color. It's one of my favorite, like, I guess fictional hair colors. Because not I, I can't think of anyone that in real life that actually has a hair color that looks like that. Okay, so this is sort of the hub. Like how in uh, Demon Souls you have whatever it's called, the big ass hub that has Made in Black in it. Uh, Dark Souls 1, you have the Firelink. 2, you have Majula. 3, you have Hey, Remember Firelink, except now it's bigger for no reason. And in Bloodborne, you have loading screens. And in Sekiro, you have something, I guess, because no one fucking cares. Uh, in uh, Elden Ring, you have Round Table Hole. Except uh, now instead of being the hub that you have to go back to all the time, now it's an optional place that you go to for very important things, which is the correct way of doing it. They finally learned their lesson. They finally learned their lesson about several things, but there's other things that they did they still have not learned their lesson about. Uh, which will be demonstrated much later into the LP, I'm sure. Uh, but for the time being, wrong time to hold. As a planet were tarnished like us, which are apparently like dead people who aren't dead that are brought back to life even though they weren't dead. And are now guided by grace even though some of them can't see grace anymore. That's where we all are, for some reason. That's not really explained just yet. Combat is prohibited. You can't use your R1s. Actually, you can't even stop two-handing your weapon, oddly enough. Uh, this room is fine. Yes. Round Table Hole is located outside of this world. It can be re only reached by Sides of Grace. Alright. So there's people here. Before we do anything else, and yeah, I know that you recognize one of them. Before we do anything else, I would like to note this location. There's a lot of blood stains over there and I don't know why yet and also phantoms down there fighting something wicked sword head I have no idea what that means but I, I guess you could jump over this but you're probably not supposed to because that's the location that I think is beyond the fog wall sort of locations that are walled off outsider head therefore are you ready yeah, I have no idea. There was probably something story-related. Don't know. Also, uh, I didn't mention this in part two, which I probably should have. But whenever the cutscene, the opening cutscene started, you know, minutes after I installed the game, I didn't know anything about it. I assumed that the opening cutscene was detailing first the lore of the world and then going over the bosses. Some of them might be bosses. But a lot of them also just seem to be just NPCs that are just sort of just there for whatever the reasons. Which I appreciate a lot. It's pretty interesting. Uh, but these are characters. I don't know who they are, though. Here's a guy with a wolf. I think that I might recognize him, but it's hard to say. And also here is another lady. You know, it's really hard to have a detailed lore discussion about these these things when you know nothing about what it is that you're looking at. And here's an Erd Tree. I know what that is. That's the objective of the game. Erd Tree. Erd Tree. Okay. But more importantly, big table, bunch of what looks like tree swords. Stop it. Bunch of, like, tree swords that either are swords that are fashioned from a tree that were grown into the shape of a sword, or they are swords that were at one point swords and then became tree-like in some fashion. Don't know. But they come in... Whoop, frame rate. They uh, uh, come in a variety of shapes. I will note that this one here... Not the one that has a sign on it, but the one next to it does seem to be in the shape of, generally, a Zweihander that you would recognize. Uh, not necessarily a Zweihander, but just a an ultra great sword by this game's logic, or the Dark Souls game's logic, that has pairing lugs. Which, why would you make a weird tree sword that has pairing lugs? Unless it was something that was meant to either emulate a real sword or be used as a sword. So it's my assumption that these were at one point 
actual weapons that were lodged into this thing because we also have this weird big hatchet thing that was lodged into here that also has become treeified. Now, looking down here, you'll note that the center of this thing seems to have been shattered in some way. So whether these things actually... Like this sword looks like it was inserted in a sort of a weird way where you would think that you would have turned it so that the pairing lugs were facing down and the hilt was facing down and up uh, so that it would follow the grooves of whatever it was that caused this. But no, just inserted the other way. Like this one. Like this one's actually doing it right. Although it is not matching the uh, uh, placement of that big scar or whatever it happens to be. So whether this was caused by everyone chipping their weapons into it, I don't know. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> yeah, those are pretty cheap, right? You can just buy those at Walmart. That's yeah, fine. Um, but it almost looks like either these weapons being jammed into whatever the symbol is, is is the thing that's causing this gigantic sort of bonfire, this point of grace to be formed. Or the point of grace was always here and that is what is causing these weapons to uh, treeify in some way. Which is lore significant in a way. I would assume that the reason why the swords are here is to sort of signify that people are giving up their arms whenever they come here. Now whether these belong to anyone, I don't know, but that would seem to be the sort of artistic uh, significance. Although this could mean something completely different, I don't know yet. Uh, but maybe the light from these points of grace are related to the Erd trees, like so much that it's actually transforming them into little miniature Erd trees. So maybe that's what's going on. Which would point out again to the potential for the Erd tree to have some sort of transformative quality that makes things be what they should not be. Alright, first of all, let's talk to blind <laughs> wheel neck man. <laughs> I see you've just arrived. Welcome to the Round Table Hold. I'm Corin, a man of the cloth. I teach incantations, the strength granted us by the two fingers, and explore the secrets of the Golden Order, so that one day, if a tarnished of the Round Table Hold should become Elden Lord, I might counsel them, ensuring order regains its proper form, writing rule over men. By the way, do you still see it? The guidance of grace. Oh, I kind of don't like it whenever NPCs rattle on like that because I can't remember what they said and it's hard to go over all of it. But he is a man of the cloth, whatever that means exactly. There doesn't seem to be, as far as I know, a church exactly. Like we have found churches, but not really something that is described as like a... a, a like, there's no Church of Thurland. There's no Catholic Church. There's no big overarching thing that I'm aware of. Could be the case. Don't know. Um, and remember, at the start of the game, whatever I was showing you in Part 2, the descriptions for all the classes, the description for the Prophet, I believe the name of the class was, was basically that it he was prophesizing things that people didn't much care for, and that's the reason why he was shown to be imprisoned. And you notice this guy also has a similar thing. Uh, he has this... I mean, it looks like a spoked wheel that has been fastened around his neck. Hmm. Which note... No, the split does fall all the way. The split is more visible on the uh, outer, um, the outer rim on the sort of northern side of his wheel than it is the southern side. I don't know why it's in the. I have seen quite a few like uh, pill box or torture things like this, but I can't remember any that are like in the the fashion of a wheel. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. It might be a reference to something historical, I don't know. But it does have like this little tag that's also coming off of him. 
and it attaches to something that is like an iron talisman of some sort. But it doesn't seem to have any writing on it that I can tell. I've got to answer this question before I can zoom in on him. But he also has this weird bell that doesn't seem to have like an interior... Um, whatever the little thing is that's inside the interior of a bell that knocks around and gives it the bell quality. It's just like an empty cylinder, although it could just be an oversight. Or not an oversight, just a decision because it didn't really matter. But otherwise, yeah, he's just wearing just rags, essentially. And he does have the same chain on his uh, ankle as uh, the starting class would have. So apparently he was imprisoned at some point, or this is their uniform. This is just what church people wear, their Sunday best. So he's asking if we actually still see the light. Like, obviously he... <laughs> He probably shouldn't see anything, but, you know, given he's wearing a blindfold at all, but... Uh, also note that there are, like, storage little compartments for all the weapons that are here, too. But we don't actually see that many people. So, maybe a lot of Tarnished have come and gone through these halls that we have not seen, and these are all that remains of them. Who can say? Most Tarnished are blind to it these days. You are something of a rare breed. Well, what do you say? Care to learn an incantation of the two fingers? Like, every experience that I've had is that two fingers is too much. Like, usually you get one finger there, and it's the best ever. You get two in there, and it's, you need to stop. What are we talking about? Okay, so incantations. Incantations are the miracles of this game. Uh, this heals. It can be cast in motion. There's not too many things that actually... For some reason, a lot of emotes are like this, too. They freeze you in place, whereas in uh, 3 and Bloodborne, they did not. So why they regressed on that, I don't know. Uh, two Fingers. The Two Fingers has... We don't actually... I don't know anything about the Two Fingers. We just... I think if there's two fingers, there's got to be three fingers, right? If it's a whole hand. So either there's like other things that are like, I'm the one finger, I'm the I'm I'm the three finger. Like I'm the other two it wouldn't be another two finger, that would be too confusing. So yeah, I, I guess it would have to just be the three fingers. Or just other uh, there's three one fingers or something, I don't know. Uh but there, there's probably another group called the three fingers somewhere, just by sheer logic of it. Uh if they're sticking with that thing. Or it could be like the multi-hand thing, since there are people that have multiple hands, but those only seem to be like artificial in nature. I don't know, I'm reading too much into it too early. All the same. Uh, has high hopes for the Tarnished, that even if they should be wounded, even should they fall, they will continue to fight for their duty. Alright, same thing with this one. Only uh, it's for nearby allies, very useful. Alleviates poison buildup, cures poison. This comes in... This came in real handy uh, for me recently because there is a room full of really annoying cunty bats that scream real loud and one-shot kill you and breathe poison, and they love doing that exclusively. And I have not find, found any items in the game yet. I may have just missed one uh, cookbook somewhere that heals poison. So whenever I get poisoned, I'm just going to have to have it. Unless I have this specifically. So this is going to be one of the first things that I get as soon as I get 10 faith. Okay. Uh, magic negation. Follow the path that's been set for you and you will make enemies of all others. So one of the deals with the tarnish is that the light that you see is supposed to guide you presumably to what the will of the Erd Tree is. Like whatever its will happens to be. Presumably. I think. Um, whether that's good or bad, we don't know yet. And it's probably going to be a Dark Souls thing where once you get to the end, you have to make some sort of decision, I'm sure. Um, follow the path that's been set for you, so the light that you're tracking, I guess, and you will make enemies of all others. Monks, sorcerers, the ancient dragon knights, and the scions of gold. I don't know what any of those are specifically. It is interesting, though, that the sorcerers, which you would think... Like, all the sorcerers are linked together with this weird academy thing, right? They also are enemies of the Erd Tree? 
Maybe I'm reading too much into it. I don't know what the monks are, though. Uh, ancient Dragon Knights. I don't know what the Ancient Dragon Knights are, either. We'll get to it, I guess. Heed me. The Lands Between offers no welcome to the Tarnished. Alright. So, no one here likes me. Because presumably we're here to, to enact the will of the Erd Tree. Maybe we'll decide not to in the future. Uh, but that's what we're being guided by, so I'm guessing that the monks, sorcerers, dragon knights, and scions of gold are all enemies of the Erd Tree in some way. So, same thing. Da, 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 da. Uh, rejection. Produces Shockway, blah, blah, blah. Heart tarnished. Hey, tarnished! If you truly walk in faith, you must be prepared to reject all else. So, adhering to the will of the Erd Tree means being like a dumb, willful bitch that rejects science, I guess. <laughs> um, catch Flame. Incantation originating from a sinister prophecy. Ooh. That is weird. It's an incantation that originates from a sinister prophecy. So these sort of work like the logic of miracles in Dark Souls, I guess. Um, in Dark Souls, miracles were actually like sheets of paper that had like stories on them. And you would read the stories and those would somehow embody the will of the gods. And that's what invoked, you know, faith-based miracles, supposedly. Although that's not necessarily true. Won't go into it. Um... But this sort of works in a similar fashion, I guess, where you're incantating, is that a word, uh, things that have been written down at some point. The incantation can be cast without delay, but without performing another action. Uh, the flame of ruin is anathema, that's bad, to the Erd Tree. But prophets sometimes glimpse it within the, the faith all the same. Sadly, when this occurs, their sole reward is banishment. So, this seems to be, like, forbidden in some way, although it doesn't say as much. The Flame of Ruin is anathema to the Erd Tree, so the Erd Tree doesn't like it when it catches on fire. But prophets sometimes glimpse it within the same faith all the same. So some of the prophets, which I guess would include this guy if he's teaching it, uh, see it as being a component to the faith that they have in the Erd Tree all the same. And I'm assuming that he's aligned with the Erd Tree. Like, again, I'm not 100% on all this stuff. Sadly, when this occurs, there's a reward as banishment. So, remember, the starting class was said to be saying prophecies that they should not be saying, and that's the reason why that they were excised from being sorcerers out of the nobility and were instead enslaved or, you know, put in the chains. Like this guy. Because we look... Our starting class looks very similar to this guy. So, I guess he follows suit. He was saying prophetic things that other people did not care for, and as a result, he was chained up. I remember his goal in life is to guide anyone that might become... Uh, whatever the prophecy was that he said. The Elden Lord, yeah. <laughs> the Ring Lord. <laughs> um, so he's not actually trying to be that himself. He's just waiting for someone else to do it so that he can guide them in some way that he's not specifying. Throws a ball, Raging Fire, Flame Sling. Uh, this is way more useful in my experience. Uh, like, I'm still using this on my character, unfortunately. Uh, one thing that I'll say about incantations is I haven't found many of them on my other character that were actually useful. I have found new ones, but a lot of them are okay at clearing out groups of enemies, but not really much else. Or they would be useful on enemies that don't beat the shit out of you so easily, but you it's, it's a typical FromSoft game, so you don't have much poise, and Enemies can knock you out of attacks very easily or just damage you so much that even if you had high armor, you just die in the process of using an attack. Uh, and the enemies that do not have that are not that big of a threat are things that you wouldn't be using the miracles or the incantations on in the first place. So it has that problem. It's another, it's another magic issue with FromSoft games. Uh, I, again, I haven't gotten to all of them, though. 
Flame burn is another one that probably some of this in Star Wars Batch. Okay, so same thing. May the Golden Order shine through you. Okay, whatever the Golden Order is, I'll let it shine through me. Not on me, just right through me. Good to know. Okay, so here's D again. Ah, we meet again. I'm glad you took my warning to heart. Those who live in death should be left well alone. All the more should you spy a mariner among their number. So once you defeat the mar you, mariner, you have an option of just showing him the death route that you got from them. And then he's like, dude, come on. Also note, some of you have probably noticed this already and are screaming it at your screens. His hand moved. So now, instead of holding the head with his golden arm, his left arm, he's holding it with the right arm. So both arms do have full functionality, but he is also apparently very intent on holding this uh, piece of his armor, which could be a real person in there, for all I know. Like, imagine how fucked up that would be. Uh -huh. um, holding its eyes, even though it's already blindfolded. So he's concealing it from seeing something. Also note that, it, now that we can actually see it, the other silver arm up here is also very, very itty-bitty. Because I mentioned that because the uh, foot down here is also itty-bitty. But both of his golden arms seem to be... Maybe not. Maybe not. No. his It seems like his other golden gauntlet thing is a little bit smaller than his other hand. So yeah, the uh, secondary uh, arm and leg are always a little bit smaller. Although with his actual legs, or those are his real legs, presumably. So they're both the same size, though. Although this one, it occupies way less space. So I guess in terms of design, that was the solution. Eh, interesting. Those who live in death should be left well alone. All the more should you spy a mariner. Among their number. So he says that if we see any naughty skeletons, then we should just just leave. Just don't bother them. Although we'll learn later that he is actually actively seeking them out and trying to kill them. So maybe he's a dirty hypocrite. Ah, hello. You must be new here. Hello, handsome man. I'm, well, just call me Dialos. I will not the remember that. One's house holds little import in these lands. By the way. Have you met a young woman named Lanya on your travels? She's my servant, but fickle as the wind. Take I have no idea who this person is. a moment and she's good as gone. If you find her, please be sure to tell me. Okay, so this guy did say he introduced himself as <laughs> Diablos or whatever. Uh, Diablos, I think. Uh, obviously, very, very well dressed. But he introduced himself almost as though he was going to introduce himself as being from a specific house. But then thought, you know what, it doesn't actually matter here. Uh, so, again, if all of the Tarnished are dead in some capacity, or were dead at some point, then I guess he, you know, was also past. So maybe his house doesn't even exist anymore, for all I know. Um, very, very ornate. Looks like his little flower, uh, whatever whatever you call those, embellishes up top. Rest of it seems to be kind of generic, faceted with gems. Very nice looking. So you can definitely tell he comes from money. He's also kept his armor. Like, he's not... He's not like a old D over here. Sorry about chairs. He's not like D over here and he has like a, a nasty old torn up cape. Like, everything about him looks nice. So he's looking for his tomboy GF. Be sure to tell me if you meet a young woman named Lanya. Lanya. She's a servant to my house. She's been my companion since childhood. I've lost count of the number of times I've had to find her like this. Honestly, she's such a little tomboy. She's such a sexy little brown tomboy. Just like my mangas. Be sure to tell me if you meet a young woman. She's a servant. Okay. She's been my companion. I've lost count of the Honestly. Okay, so... She presumably is also tarnished, which she would have to be to be here, I guess, maybe. That might not be the case, I have no idea. Okay, so 
Look around real fast. More of this sort of uh, integration of tree and stone. Like these things, I guess you could also see as being stone. Well, then again, I guess swords themselves are like, they're made of metal, so they're also made of stone in their own way, aside from the, the wooden handles, which would be wood already. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Now, who this guy is, I have no idea. But even his, uh, his garb does seem to have the same sort of thing going on. He also seems to have the Erdtree symbol on his chest, although you can't really see it. And uh, there's more sort of Erdtree paraphernalia on the weird little thing on his head. Good for you, buddy. What about you, lady? Same sort of deal, except this time ending with an, what appears to be an actual flower, which is kind of strange. She bald. Also, it kind of looks like she's scarred in, in a way. Like her face has been burned in some some way. Otherwise, nothing too much to note there. Little cups up there, as well as candles that are not lit, but still melting. Probably not a good idea to leave those right there. It's hard to tell what was there originally and what I have blasted by just rolling through everything. Yeah, this fireplace. the fireplace. Is this something that flew over here? No, I guess it was always here. This is random little piece of pottery. I guess it is. Maybe that's something that I did. <laughs> it's hard to remember the devastation that I've been uh, wreaking. Okay, so this lady is all around the place. Actually, she is every single statue except for this one. So these two statues lead to the blacksmith area. All the other ones are different. Now this dude, I don't remember what his name is. But he is baller, isn't he? Let's get a better look at him. He's very faded looking. It almost looks like he's covered in ash. Like the, the color of what I guess is his metal armor. Almost looks like it's made of cloth, or almost looks uh, plasticky, just because it's so incredibly faded looking. Like it's been out sitting in the sun or something. The His cloth almost looks the same way. Also, his uh, neck is kind of strange. This part of his helmet looks like furling out in a way that almost looks like coral. Or, actually, those may be ears. This is probably the all-knowing guy from the opening cinematic. But I can't remember what his name is. The one thing that does not look faded is the staff that he's holding. Or the staff that is holding him, as it, as it were. What is actually at its top, I'm not sure. But it's a big claw. Big golden claw. Hmm. Oh, this is a rare occasion. I can't remember the last time a new tarnished made their way to the round table. Very well. As your senior, I bid you welcome. It is safe here. You may let down your guard. He said, unsheathing a knife. Okay, so some a little bit of important information. Apparently, it's been a long time since he's seen another Tarnished. Uh, which is kind of interesting. Because uh, if it's been a while since he's seen another Tarnished, and he's the, a senior, it must have been a long time since another one's been through. But none of the other ones seem to have mentioned that. So, if that's the case, then all these guys must have been here a long time as well. Which would make them also pretty old. Although his very long time could be a thousand years. It could be uh, like two years. You know, have no idea. It depends on what his qualifier for a long time happens to be. Allow me a word of advice. Yeah. As your senior, you 
but a mere visitor to the round table. Nothing more. A house guest. Yet to earn their keep. Remember your place, newcomer. Okay, so we're, we're being allowed into the round table area. But I guess we're not being seen as a true member or whatever this round table happens to be yet. And I guess that would um, would involve like defeating a boss or something. Also no no actual face. Nothing modeled down there. Whether that actually means anything or is it is if it's just like a artistic choice, I have no idea. But not too much to be inferred beyond that. There's nothing left to say. Be at your leisure. Okay. Well, that's that. I've never tried this. Block shot. Okay. So I guess the reason why there's so many bloodstains down there is because if you jump off early, then they don't much care for the fact that you're exploring areas that you shouldn't be exploring, so maybe they go down there and kill you? I don't know. I actually don't know anything about that. Door. So, I do know that once you come back here, this door is open, and that guy, whatever his name is, I can't remember, from the opening cutscene, he is in here looking over his notes. And this, uh... This whatever he is... just hangs out here and doesn't actually say anything. But boy, is he fucked up looking. Is that his actual face or is it a mask? I think it might be his actual face. But considering that they are there together, then you would assume that they're related in some way. Not related, like, uh, biologically, but, you know, there's some sort of affiliation. Because even his armor is, like, really badly fucked up. Like, it looks like it's just absolutely ancient. It's very corroded. And it's gone green from uh, all the, the oxide that presumably is in it. It's like rusted over. The leather, oddly, <laughs> the leather, oddly, is intact. Uh, unfortunately, the skin, not so much. You know, whenever I just walk past this guy... The first few times, I just assumed he had some sort of weird, like, skull mask on. And actually, even his... Whoop. Didn't mean to clip inside your body there, buddy. Don't mean to look at my pretty face, either. Yeah. Maybe I'll just do it this way. It's hard to tell what that idiot's... <laughs> Bright-ass, uh message right there. But it looks like his spinal column is also exposed. Like it's actually... His armor has separated in the back and you can actually see his spine. Again, very hard to tell. You can't tell from this angle at all. And if that's supposed to be a weapon that he's using, it is just a hand. Like it's just a skeletal hand. That has been sharpened into a point, so I guess that is a weapon of some sort. Hmm. Makes me wonder at some point you'll be able to just attack the people here. He does have a cloth around his uh, waist, though. Okay, well, anyways, he doesn't have any dialogue, as exhibited here. You just talk, and he just does nothing. But he does give you what do you want. He does give you his pose. Or she does. It's hard to tell. Uh, there's not much to say about this person. You can't even really deduce too much from their armor. Hmm. Well, all the same. Okay, anything in here? There are books everywhere, by the way. Which is just sort of a generic... Uh, generic trapping... That they show off everyone. Here's that same painting. So you're going to be seeing a lot of that. Got a lot of uh, this random concept art. Okay. And a door that we can't use. That just is just here. You could even sort of see through the geometry of it. 
to what looks like just a blank void. So there's probably actually just... Oh, no. Take that back. You can see, actually, no, you can see a, uh, what looks like a little bit of light, like a candlelight, right there. You may not be able to see it on, woo, you may not be able to, well, no, definitely can't see it. Well, all right, well, there. You may not be able to see it on your monitors or on the YouTube video. Yeah, there does seem to be a little bit of flicker back there, so maybe that opens up at some point. Why? <laughs> Did you really have to jump up there? Now these things, I have no idea. I, woo. Too close? Too close. Okay. So these things are not an NPC from what I can tell. And the fact that they're fading out like this seems to indicate that it is a completely static model. But they do look like they're... Yes. They are two completely separate people. At first I thought they might either have four arms or they might have like one limb that's united. But no, they're just very, very close. And uh, they don't say anything exactly. Twin main husks. The only other time that we've heard... Things described as maidens have been uh, the level up ladies. The maidens that are utilized by the two fingers, whoever the two fingers are. But these are husks, so I guess these used to be maidens and now they are these things. I suppose. But they offer a lot of things. This is another reason why I'm going to need a lot of runes. And I know just the place to get them, but it's going to require me actually killing a boss. Uh, so, that will be on our to-do list. Not much to say about them for now. Erd tree up there. That's about it. Various generic art assets all around the place. There might be like one or two things in this area that I'm not seeing. Which would not surprise me in the least. Uh, let me take care of this first. I've already circled back. Good. Okay, so it's just this area that's left, alright? This will also save me the trouble of having to worry about this in the future. And here's an area showing off uh, a little bit of a gallery of armaments. Generic armor, generic shield, generic swords, generic helmets. Actually, I think, yeah, I uh, recognize this helmet. Because we see this on some enemies later on. Hmm. Who, I, what the name of those enemies are, I don't know. This is going to require actually getting the drops, which is one of those reasons why I was going to go arcane, specifically so I could deal with that. Now uh, this guy, a lot to be said about this guy's appearance. There's like some weird scaling on his body. Come on, video game, come on. The same sort of weird hair that you see it's not really hair, it's like root systems that are erupting out of his body. Also note... The thing that I noticed with Alexander about his weird feet. He has the exact same thing. Although his, is, his are way more animalistic looking. Whereas with Alexander's, they almost look like ordinary human legs and he was just standing on his tiptoes for the most part. Although his, he still has like five toes that are just really gnarled. But one of them does seem to be almost like a gorilla-like in the sense of uh, it's made for gripping. But he does have like roots erupting out of his back, almost like it used to be a tail, or it's just imitating a tailbone. Uh, going back to Demon Souls, he does remind me of that character in that game, the blacksmith. So maybe that's some sort of some sort of reference to blacksmiths being fucked up in some way. That's an Asian culture that I don't recognize. And remember, there was also that uh, item that we found that was a horn from an animal that does not have horns. So he does seem to have the same thing going for him, where he's erupting things out of his body that he should not have. Now, whether this is some sort of corruption of the Erd tree or not, I don't know. Maybe it's a corruption of this great tree that we've been hearing about. Again, have no idea.
your new face. No matter, it's all the same. Lay out your arms. Let's get smithing. Let's get smithing. Fuck yeah. Also, yes, he does. Come on, video game. Every time I move the camera, it tries to load in things and it freaks out. Yeah, his uh, his uh, leg is does have a good old blanka. <laughs> uh, uh, chain uh, attached to, and it's attached to the wall, so he cannot get away. So this is what he does. This is what he does, my friend. He just he he's the armory guy. How about those chains? That's nothing special. I'm a prisoner, and these are my chains. I'm trapped by the hold. I'm dying, smithing for you fools. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Notice he says that he's trapped by the hold. Not that he's trapped by us. Like, presumably, if he's a black, he could just turn around and just take the chains off, presumably. I mean, he's look at all the stuff that he's working with. The idea that he wouldn't be able to just take care of a simple chain when he's working with, like, metallurgy is kind of ridiculous. So maybe there's some sort of arcane quality to this building. Or maybe the surrounding area. Maybe the thing that we see in the center that presumably is linked to the Erd Tree is uh, what's giving power to whatever is holding him here. And uh, we haven't got to this boss yet, but Mur Murgot, Murgo, whatever his name is, the first boss that you can run into... Major boss, anyways. Uh, not an open world like mini boss. Uh, that guy also has like tons of like things erupting from his body as well, and he looks very similar to this guy. Uh, this guy might actually be from the opening cutscene. I don't remember him. I'll have to rewatch it several, several times to get a inkling of what's going on. You're a prisoner? Well, no grudge against you. My being a prisoner is no fault of yours. Besides, I don't mind smithing. Despite my differences, the weapons get stronger all the same. Even time. Technique never fails. Besides, it helps me forget. The sheer terror of her. So it seems like he's saying that whatever he has is complicating his ordinary technique of smithing. But given enough time, he can get it done all the same. So apparently he used to be something besides what he is now. So this is indeed an affliction of some sort. Also, him smithing helps him forget the terror of her. But he won't go into what that means. I could sit here and speculate endlessly about any number of completely fictional women. Just like real life, am I right? But I won't do that. Because there's no need. What I will demonstrate, however, is if you go down here to this uh, sort of a uh, lardery, the lard, where all the... It is interesting that people do seem to still eat. They still eat and drink. So they're, they're, not, like, they're not like undead in Dark Souls where presumably you can survive without it, but it may not necessarily be a great idea. But go down here, this is where all that stuff is stored. Close to the kitchen, I guess. Can't open this, of course. But there is this. Which, I don't think we have... Do we have a stone sword key? We do. Oh, we don't. But why'd you even do it then? But here we can, uh... Interact with the statue of the... Two little golems that are fucking. <laughs> it really just... Like, if you just walk up to it, it really just looks like they're fucking. Like, just fucking like animals. It could be better. It could be worse. It could be much worse. Uh, but I, I guess you're supposed to, since one of them already has like a little key stuck in his head, you're supposed to stick it inside the other one's head. And after you do that, this will open up. What actually is in there, I don't know. Although it does look like there is yet another one of these stupid things. So maybe once we do that one, there will be another one, and then another one. Who knows? But that's something to be done in the future as well. So I'm going to need a lot of runes. So after I'm done with this session, I'm going to be farming the fuck out of those things. 
and I'm going to be buying every last merchant item I can get my little grubby hands on. And I'll be trying my best to avoid things that involve cutscenes, but no promises. Also, if you've been wondering who that kitty was on the, uh, the title card that I have, it's me. It's my little VTuber. If you didn't know, I do VTubing on Twitch sometimes. I'm little kitty cat. And I have my, actually, the second version of the character that I have drawn uh, being rigged right now. It's not done yet, though. And this is Fia. She is the lady that's holding me in the title card. And I, I, like, even though I had just installed the game, I got those two recorded. The character creation in the first part. And then I was like, ah, oh, crap, I need to draw a title card, too. I need to find a song that I can use as, like, the little opening, like, five or whatever seconds. So I thought, what can I use? So I, on my other character, I had just gotten to this part. Like, I just, it's one of the first things that happens. And I thought, you know what? This is wholesome. It sort of, and I had the idea for holding the cat, so like, this, I'll use this. That'll be something that will grab the eye. And I didn't want to be, like, a modern YouTube thumbnail where it's something from the footage, like some crazy like monster coming at the screen with my face reacting to it, like all that shit. Uh, so I just wanted it to be the same card over and over and over again. You know, just like it used to be back in the, the 2010s. No one's going to be watching this LP either way, so who cares? But this is Fia. She is Lady. Uh, actually, first let's look at her room. Big jar. Big... Why big? Me no no. But also, tiny feet. Tiny kitty feet. Almost look like looks like it's something to deal with like aromas. I don't know though. And this is, I think this is a changing, uh, whatever they call it, changing board. Fold out changing board so you can't see her being all nude. You know, I have seen these things in front of fireplaces, but I have no idea what they're actually for. Maybe it's just like a polite barrier to say, don't touch the fire. <laughs> I don't actually know. Uh, candelabras. Another weird changing board that's just off in the corner. Firewood. Plants. Random books. Book that open. Book that opened with word no read. No read good word per book. Okay, so not that. Painting of Erd Tree with on fire lady. Seem important to primate brain. That seemed very important. It almost looks like the lady is the Erd Tree. Have no idea what the significance of this is yet. But, to me, the this may not have any connection at all, I don't know. But to me, this lady's hair, her long tendril hair, looks very suspiciously like the... What was her name? I can't remember her name. But the puppet girl, Puppet GF, the blue Puppet GF that we met in part... Two. Uh, it looks like the hair that she had wrapped around her neck that was acting as the the border to the weird like hair cape that she had on. Like her fur cape. This is what it looks like to me. But again, that might not hold any significance whatsoever. It could be thematic in some way. And also mirror that's not a mirror because mirrors are hard. And that same lady again. Maybe that's who the lady is supposed to be. Maybe this is just concept art for a uh, Fia. And here she is. It's her. Check it out. Not much to say about her design. I've already drawn her. She has blonde hair, which is kind of unusual for himself game. You know, so many blondes running around. Not unless they're like crazy holy men that want to murder everything. Greetings, great champion called by grace. I am Fia. Yeah. Circumstances have I have an OC called Fia. She's a big butted Yorl. Great champion. Would you allow me to hold you? But briefly. Wanna perhaps fuck? Perhaps you might share with me some of your lifely vigor and your stout heartedness. 
Doing so will grant me the warmth of a champion. And you, I am sure, will bear a Balderkin's blessing. Yeah, you Do might you bear a blessing vulgar, too. Perhaps. No, Where not I vulgar. Come from, it is vulgar. It yes. is a sacred act. It is. Okay, um, something to note in her dialogue. She almost presents it as though it's some sort of interchange. Like, maybe you will get something from me, and I will get something from you. Like, I will... She will receive some of our, like, championly goodness or whatever. Uh, it makes it sound... Because that's how also Melfina described the process of leveling up. It's as though we're actually inter interacting with one another on in an almost sort of metaphysical way. And we're interchanging or manipulating one another's bodies in a way that otherwise not be possible in real life. I have no idea. Also, there is a bug sometimes where it just skips dialogue. Which is just super radical. I really appreciate that. But basically she was just saying, come here, let me hold you. you. Let's kiss. Very warm. So we get this thing. Which uh, raises poise, but you only get one at a time. What you felt light up inside you was a Baldekin's blessing. Though it is but a fleeting thing, I am afraid. She whispered. Come back to me. Should you require another, I will take you in my arms as often as you need. So this is a character I feel like was <laughs> very particular to this age that we live in. Caring sweet mommy GF that hold you. So, uh, first we'll look at this. This uses a little bit of your magic. Uh, favor bestowed upon by a deathbed companion. So there's more than one of these things. She's not the only one. And she also does... She's about to describe her history. That makes it sound as though she... We'll get to it. Uh, but it makes it sound as though she was not able to be the thing that she was raised to be. Protection of a hidden temple. Protection of a hidden temple. In the guise of a bedchamber. So strange. So it's like a secret temple used for some sort of holy purpose, I guess. Maybe it's related to the church again. In the guise of a bedchamber. What a weird concept. You just have to pay the voice poise. Uh, the favor allows one to forget any aches and pains. In death, there is only peace, and for in death, there can be no sensation. Wow. That is... Ooh. That's fucking dire. <laughs> in death, there is only peace, for in death, there can be no sensation. It's a good thing it didn't say that in death, like, death is the only source of peace or something. There is no sensation, so there is peace. That is true. That is pretty rough, though. Although it does insinuate this has something to do with just being dead. Favor disposed by Deathbed Companion. So Deathbed Companions presumably have something to do with resurrecting the dead. Which we'll get to again in a split second. But just bear that in mind with this, because... When you're bestowing this favor upon someone that is presumably dead, there is only peace, because there is no sensation. So, it's almost as though the favor itself is allowing you to experience death for a, a, for a brief moment. Or it's channeling the sensation that a, someone on their deathbed would feel. I don't know what the, the logic is, but, you know, interesting all the same. So we talk to her again, even though we have one. I am pleased to see you again. Would you like me to hold you once more? The blessing is still aflame in your breast, dear. Would you like to be held regardless? So we're not actually carrying it as an item. It's just something that's inside of us. So she's taking us back into her bed for funsies. <laughs> and again, it skips her dialogue as part of a bug, unfortunately. It was a very short piece of text. You can probably, like, pause the frame if you're insane enough and see what it says. I'm not sure what it says. You are but it's very short. Very warm. 
now we can talk in secrets. Which is... she. It's not even like a... Like a normal NPC prompt where it disappears in the center of the screen. It's presented almost like a... Like you would if you were talking to a merchant. So I guess we'll get more things like this in the future. But we can talk in secret with her. Which... Makes it also sound as though that what she's about to tell us is something that she should not be telling us because there are prying ears about or something. So maybe someone that she is we that is with us here in this area is um someone that would not be happy that she was divulging this information to us in some way. Don't know. And hopefully it doesn't skip the dialogue. I was known. As a deathbed companion, where I come from, after I received the warmth and lively vigor from a number of champions, I lay with the remains of an exalted noble to grant him another chance at life. To do so is the purpose of my being, but before I could bear the noble into new life, I was awakened by the guidance of grace and chased from my birthplace pray be kind despite all that I still wish to be a deathbed companion so please let me hold you like this as often as it takes then good day to you my dear Okay, so a lot to take in there again. Again, I really wish the NPCs would just have a continued dialogue button for that. Um, from the way she describes it, the process of making a deathbed companion involves a number of like heroes, maybe, from what she describes, sacrificing their lives to instill their warmth and vigor into her. Maybe they die, maybe they don't. Considering the... how much... Everything about her seems to center around death. Then maybe that's the case. Also note that her exterior, as far as her design, she's clad in black. So like death. Almost like the Grim Reaper. But the interior, she is like this blonde, blue-eyed lady, which seems to be like warmth. Like, uh, not saying that all blondes are like warm people, you know, just as far as symbolism goes. It's more fitting for what they're going for with her character. That internally, she's filled with this warmth and like light... But on the exterior, what you see is death. Uh, but in the making of a deathbed companion, I guess you transition whatever the life force is from one person into her. And then, as she said, she lied with a noble who presumably was already dead. And uh, was attempting to like resurrect him in some way. Or that's what I'm reading from this. That might not actually be true, but that seems to be the case. That is interesting, because she also says that she was awakened to being able to see grace, which would seem to indicate that she's tarnished. So, the opening said that we are dead, but still alive. What that means, I don't know, but if it works the same way that she says that it works... Presumably, she was alive when this happened to her. So maybe that was the process for her becoming tarnished. If she is indeed tarnished, which she would have to be if she's here. Um, so maybe you you always are alive when it happens, but you're treated as though you are dead already. Or if all the people that she's been transitioning this life force vigor from were killed in the process, which again, I don't know. Then it could be that it's just one more thing that associates death with being tarnished. Like she's actually embodying their deaths inside of her being while still being alive. So maybe all of us, including yours truly, are actually still alive and never died in, you know, quote unquote, real life. Whatever our lives used to be. But we carry within us, for some reason, some aspect of death. And as a result, we're sort of scorned by society. 
Because she does seem to indicate that she was no longer allowed to be a deathbed companion because of the fact that she was able to see uh, the light some way. So either deathbed companions are from a faction that is opposed to the Erd Tree, or just by nature of her becoming tarnished, uh, she's a failed vessel for whatever deathbed companions are designed to be. Uh, maybe we'll get more information about that in the future. I have no idea. But we have spent too much time here all the same. So, I will proceed back with whatever it was that I was trying to do originally. That is... Oh, what was it? To talk to the lady that's here at the shack. Wow. Oh, that's the downside to this format. Because I came here for this one thing. It was to talk to this lady. Everyone's been grafted. Everyone who came with me. They crossed the sea for me. They fought for me. <laughs> Only to have their arms taken. Their legs taken. Even their heads taken. Bop, 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 taken bop. Her mouth flaps aren't great. To the spider. Did you know? If you're grafted by the spider, you become a chrysalid. It's quite a lark when you think about it. Okay. Oh, God. I kind of wish I could go back to just running around the map. Just because, oh my God, there's so much to go over. Um, I don't know what her name is. She hasn't, she hasn't introduced herself yet. That's what it is. We'll call her Rosie for the, <laughs> the Rosie here. Um, she almost seems a little bit uh, naive. Quite a lark, isn't it? Uh, but she's describing people that came across the sea to fight for her. Why, I don't know. What they were fighting for, I don't know. But they have all been grafted. And I don't know if she's talking about, since we're so close, if she's talking about uh, Margit, or whatever his name is, the boss. Because he has a bunch of arms attached to his body. Those could be his, I don't know. But she describes it as the spider. She doesn't describe him as like a person. So she could be talking about something completely different. But I'm assuming it's him. Uh, maybe it's not the case. But I think later on... It's described to us that only tarnished are that. Like, only tarnished are being grafted. Because presumably, I guess, tarnished, their bodies are... Like, they can die without dying in some way. That's not really explained. So, I guess that's the thing that's actually keeping their limbs alive. So that's the reason why they're being used. So all the people that came across the sea, if that's true, which it may not be, they would also have to be tarnished. So... Uh, you can, I guess, be tarnished in other lands and other nations and other continents, whatever. And then, if that happens, you're sent here. Maybe. Or maybe I'm reading too much into it. But something to consider. You're all on your own, are you? And heading to Stormvale Castle. Enticed by the one in the white mask, I suppose. Well, you've come to be one with the spider. Well, that makes us two peas in a pod. She also but wants I don't to be. Have your courage. It's scary, you know, having your arms cut off. Like it's a little bit naive. Or your head. I want to be like everyone else, but I'm or just maybe another too spider. scared. I'm nothing but a craven. So she is here because all the people that were sent to help her with whatever it is that she was supposed to do have been grafted onto the spider. And now that we're at the castle, she assumes that we also have come to be grafted onto the spider. And she also wants to join them and be grafted onto the spider. But she's too scared because she doesn't want to have all her limbs taken off. Also, the little cloak that she's wearing on her head is what I'm wearing on my other character. You get it uh, much later on, inside that castle, actually. Oh, I know. Can you take this little one along with you? And she gives you... Spirit jellyfish ashes. The poor thing deserves someone braver than myself. And the spirits look rather fondly upon you. It'll be glad of your company, I think, the little one. Uh, this 
particular spirit I think is useful. I think it poisons things. It basically acts as a little artillery unit, or a big artillery unit. And um, I, I haven't really used it much because it's only really good for single target attacks. And most of the bosses that I've been have been running up against, either it's more useful to have something that can distract them, or they uh, don't get poisoned because they're made of rock or you know whatever. It was a pleasure to see you. Oh, can you pass on a message for me? If you see the little chrysalids in Stormvale Castle, tell them I love them, and that despite my craven heart. I'm sure I'll be joining their club soon enough. I'm finally getting the hang club. of this whole pain thing, you know? So, what chrysalids are, I don't know. Which is funny, because I've actually been in Stormvale Castle, and I have cleared out most of it. As far as I know. And it takes a long time to clear it out, because... Wow, that place is like a nightmare. It's like a labyrinth in there. There's a lot of moving along roofs and trying to find secret ways into things. It is... Whoa! It's fucking crazy. I'm glad I went through there. Like this, the good thing about doing a playthrough that you can't see yet and having some experience with it, if I was there doing it in real time, I would have not been able to concentrate it at all. To see. Oh, tell them okay, that's okay. Get in the hang. So she's afraid of the pain of uh, the whole being turned into a chrysalid thing. Whatever a chrysalid happens to be. So, here we go, puppies. I'll read these. Spirits of wolves chased from their pack. Aww. They later encountered a nameless tarnished who welcomed them as hunting companions. The wolf spirits overwhelm enemies with their agility, aiding the summoner in combat. Aww. So they were cast out of their packs, not wanted. But then they encountered a friendly, tarnished human, and then they became best buddies. Uh, jellyfish, a floating spirit that illuminates its surroundings. Prone to tears, the jellyfish girl searches for her distant home. Will bravely spew bravely will bravely spew poison at foes on her summoner's behalf. What a brave man! <laughs> <laughs> What a legendary brave soul. Okay, I don't know if uh, the jellyfish girl is that girl over there. You would think so, but not necessarily. You have to be careful with these things. But if it is her, then her goal would be to search for her distant home. Which, if that's the case, then Tarnished were d dispatched from across the ocean to help her find a distant home. So I guess that would mean that she's from here. Whatever this land is called. Actually, I don't know what this entire land mass is called. I think it just has individual portions of land that are named things. This Elden Ring World. Whatever it is. Lordran. <laughs> uh, but yeah. It seems her name is Aurelia. The Jellyfish? It would have to be, because it, uh, that's not what her name is. So I guess the Jellyfish's name is Aurelia. Hmm. But they are spirits. And spirits in this world, again, seem to be things that died. It's so weird. Uh, things die, but they either become ghosts, or they become, like, the... The, the little boat guys, whatever they're called. I, I forget what he just called them. Uh, they become the little boater guys. Or they become skeletons. Or they become ghosts that talk to you, but you, you don't hear a voice from them. Or they become these spirits, which seem to be completely dead things that remember battles of the past. Ugh, I don't know. We've already read this one. Imps that seem fond of each other's company, which is super adorable. Now... Oh, I'm so tired of talking about lore. Yes, even me. Oh, even Speedwagon is afraid. Wait, where am I going? Okay. Uh, oh my god. This way, I think.
Go away. Okay. I want to get to my precious Lucerne. That's what I'm after. And I think the way over here... Yes, this is the way we do this. Oh, goodness. So if you thought that you can only get there by going to the castle, then no, you're just wasting all your time. But first, let's talk to this thing, this crazy-ass thing. This thing, whatever the fuck it is, looks a lot like the maiden husks that we saw earlier. Like the same sort of weird, grotesque face that has no eyes. Also, four arms. Or three arms, at least. I can't tell... Is that a... Yeah, I think... Is that a foot? Is that your foot? Yeah, that's a foot. Okay, well, let's assume that somewhere in there is another arm. It could be that she just has three arms. Or... No, 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 no. She doesn't have it. She has normal limbs. That's her foot. It's just really fucked up. How are you doing that with your foot? Doesn't that hurt? Well, anyways... Her anatomy is fucking weird. At least that's true. So she has normal limbs. She does not have four arms. At all. I correct myself. That's part of the scientific process. Can't be too dedicated to information. If you're wrong, you're wrong. But she is very humpbacked. Uh, which usually with... FromSoft, I guess... Generally, like, Asian things seems to indicate some sort of, like, itinerant monk-like thing of bearing burdens. It's, like, symbolism that is not common in the West. Also, she seems to have bells on her, uh, her staff here. Which, I kind of wish that's a weapon. Because if you can swing that around and it makes little tinkling noises, that would just be a delight. But otherwise, she seems to have a little crown some sort. Looks like metal. Pure metal. And robes. With non-specific... Yeah, okay. Non-specific embroidery. But she does have sort of the same... She does have... More importantly, she has this thing around her neck that does sort of... Is it clips through her arms? That... I mean, that could be better, but whatever. Um, that sort of resemble the little things that were hanging off of the dude's neck, the prophet's neck. Actually, I don't even remember what that guy's name is, if he said it at all. Uh, back in the round table. Back in the round table. You, please, I can read them. Your fingers, please, your Let fingers. Let me suck your fingers. Show hands. Oh, oh, it's been so long. Head to the foundation of gold tarnish. I guess she means the Erd tree. Traverse Rhea Lucaria, Glintstone Eventide, and reunite the half crescents at the Grand Lift. Oh, but the bridge is collapsed and... <laughs> Why'd she say it like that? Oh, but it looks like someone can't cross the bridge. Why should that matter? Stormvale Castle still stands tall. I'm afraid this battle station will be quite operational. Um, so she tells us to go to the base... I'm guessing of the Erd Tree. She described it in very artistic terms. Go to the Foundations of Gold, or whatever she said. Um, and reach... some other complicated word. And another complicated term. But I think that's the Academy where they teach magic. So yes, the bridge down there is out. And she tells us that we have to go through the castle. But that is not actually true. Because it seems like... I can't remember where it is, though. Seems like there is a way... 
Is it jumping up here? Or is it just a normal... I can't remember how I did it. Alright, come on. Don't need another hour of me... Whoa. <laughs> well, that could have been better. I'd be very careful. No, don't... <sighs> See, I'm starting... I'm gonna blame the horse. Torrent, you're doing this. I can't believe he would do this. This is probably not even the way up here, either way. But it is fun to try. And I do need... I really need a reprieve from talking about NPCs and lore. Oh, because I'm losing my mind. I don't think it was this way. Yeah, I don't think... I don't think it was this. How did I do this? So I'm pretty sure it is not going to be this way. That's for sure. It's probably further on. But you can take like a little secret path up a cliffside. Oh, there's something over there. This might be my first death. Wish me luck. This is my first death. <laughs> That was very close, though. I'm very tempted to try that again. I don't remember doing that, though. I seem to remember it just being a little slope that I walked up, and then I was there. I don't remember it being complicated. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> That's the first time I died. Not bad, considering that I... mapped out all this without actually having any real complications. That will probably be the... The way that you die the most in this game. Just by, like, randomly falling off things. Well, I'll take that back. That's the second way you'll die the most. The way that you'll probably die the most will probably be, um... Getting roll catched by some giant man with a sword. Doing 360s and hitting you. In ways that don't make any sense. Yeah, you can get up there. No, wait, maybe you just go down the bridge. Maybe that's what it is. Even though you can't get across the bridge, maybe if you just go there, there's a secret path. I have done this before, so this is definitely a thing. Yes, yes it is. I instantly remember this. I very instantly remember this. Because there's a bunch of naughty wolves up here. And an uh, overabundance of these uh, row of fruits. As far as I know, the row of fruits aren't actually useful for anything at all. Besides feeding uh, torrent. Which is unfortunate. There might be some other purpose to them. And I'm not going to stop for any angry wolves. Uh, which is unfortunate because they use it as, as sort of an excuse to just put them everywhere to make the world feel like it's more lived in, I guess. Like there's more things going on, more items to pick up and whatnot. There isn't. But there's just big open stretches of just nothing anywhere. Here we are. This is what I wanted. Yay. Okay. This is our entry point to the rest of this area. The Lucerne that I'm after is down here. And here's a map marker while we're at it. Now, if I remember correctly, the way down here is through a man's stomach. It's via these tombstones. And fall damage in this game is not what you might think it should be. Shit, shit, shit. The game... Ooh. How did I survive all that? The game, like, started eating my inputs because it was loading things and it wasn't registering uh, what I was telling it to do, which is kind of not great. Uh, let's see. 
there should be like a waypoint or something around here. Oh, I don't know why I'm calling them waypoints. I said I was going to call them bonfires. Also cool that I can't go through that. Here we are. This area does have some pretty cool little... I wonder if I can two-hand while I'm on horseback. No, but I can switch weapons. That's strange. Huh. Well, that is useful. But there's a little bit of neat uh, storytelling up here. That can happen. Although, is this the right place? I think it is. Maybe I'm seeing... Maybe it happens at night or something. Good God, that load. I'm, like, kind of worried about <laughs> moving too fast because of the way that this game loads things. Now, this dude... This dude, obviously, was pulling one of these little carts. And these carts, we did this in one of the earlier parts. Come load. Tree Spear. I'll try not to bother him all the same. There's a bit of storytelling there. Just that random cart. Out in the middle of nowhere. Now, I thought the Lucerne was, like, right around here. It's right around where I lost all my frames. Ow. God, that's annoying. God, the tracking on those magic missiles or whatever is fucking crazy. Also took off almost all my health. Now, granted, this is an area I probably shouldn't be in right now. Now, I'm pretty sure... Maybe it only spawns in when that little event happens. I'm not sure what triggers it. But there's like a bunch of ghosts that spawn in. And it's like a, a battle that happened in the past or something. Maybe it does happen at night. That's another thing about this game, is that some sometimes things will open, only occur during nighttime. Let's try it. Because we're here. This is the thing that I was coming here to do. Is get my precious Lucerne. Okay. But a corpse ends up spawning in. No, nothing changed. Maybe this is the slightly a slightly wrong location, and I'm just not really registering it. I was pretty sure it was this. All the same, my goal of getting all the maps is what I was really after. But it's supposed to be like right around here. Yeah, because this is where the battle took place. Maybe I had to kill that guy first. Because that's the only thing I can think of that's actually different. Which might be a problem because I don't have anything upgraded. So... Before I start cavorting with that, let's do the map. Little nap, nap, map bit that I was trying to... Let's do that first. And also... One thing that I can do since it's very early game is get the two little... Remember how... In order to get to the big Erd tree... God, that thing's big. Um, there is also... You can't see it. There's way more map up there. Whoa, that load in. They really need the <laughs> they really need to fix that. Um It was said that we need to There's like two different ways of reaching that area. But the one that we know of is um Getting two halves of this talisman or emblem or something. And after we have both halves, that will somehow grant us access. And that is true. Also, that is a gigantic lobster over there. But we'll just ignore that. Because we're not there yet. 
Okay. You guys get the fuck away from there. I remember you. Because I walked up there and they started trying to stun lock me. Fucking weird wads. Alright. Took that hit. Alright. Map found. That's exactly what I wanted. Unfortunately, I can't quite tell where I'm going. Because now I can't have access to my map. Because I'm being attacked, being followed, being stalked. But the, the kind of first thing I'm going to be doing with a lot of this stuff in the first few parts is just gathering all the stuff that I want. So that I can actually have a general build structure that I want before I start goofing around. Because if most of this game is going to be analysis, which thankfully it can all be... Oh, because wow, that was just killing me. Turbine runes, okay. I'm gonna need the maps over there. I don't need it right this second, though. Okay. First. Um, yeah, I'm gonna... wanna gather all the stuff that I need. But, all the stuff that I need is going to be scattered all around the place. One of my sort of criticisms of this game... Maybe I have to talk to the ghost first. This is like there's another ghost around here. Ah, oh, the puppets. The poopits. The puppets. Whoop, the pups what? The puppets. The puppets besiege us. So maybe that's the thing that I need to trigger it. I don't know. But yeah, these, these crazy-ass puppet things. Which we'll see a couple of them relatively soon. They look like this. But these are, like, rusted. So I guess presumably they're made of metal. Or they're made of... Maybe they used to be made of something else and the Erd Tree turned them to <laughs> stone or something. I have no idea. But this, this sort of thing is supposed to happen. Where you can clearly... Maybe it's here. I just misremembered. Yeah, this is exactly what I was remembering. Stop it. Yeah, this is the thing I actually remember. Which means that the... Please don't shoot me. Which means that the Lucerne should be... Lucerne, there it is. Got it. Yeah, I just got my directions mixed up. It's down here. That's what I wanted. So let's get away from that clusterfuck as soon as possible. But yeah, that's almost like a memory playing out. You talk to that ghost and then come down here, and then all of a sudden you see all this happening. And it's these real soldiers. I forget what they're called, like G-something Gardic soldiers. And they're fighting one of these giants who has a cape, which is just a spiffy cape. Ooh, his poise got broken. And they're fighting a bunch of these little uh, ghostly apparition guys, too. So maybe it's not so much that they're fighting a memory so much as the ghosts of the soldiers that were fighting the puppets in the past a long time ago are coming back alive, which includes the giant. And they're now just hostile to everything around them. Maybe that's what's going on. That is my best guess as of now. But being in this area actually is giving us some free experience. Actually, speaking of which... May as well. I'm not gonna stay. But if you guys want to participate, have at it. Haha! -ha. No, not you. Oh gosh, its frame rates are making it. This is another thing, doing combat. I really hate that move. Uh, 
doing combat we're recording on Elden Ring PC release. Not great. Now, I think that might be like the only dude left. Now there's like one guy over there. And I don't think these guys are going to be able to take on this giant. Nope. <laughs> One hit is enough. Like, this is an area that I'm really not supposed to be in right now. Nope, none of that. Well, there he goes. Well, it was a, I gave him a shot. I gave him a shot. And that's the story of how a giant and his friends... Absolutely fucked up some puppets. Oh, nope, nope, none of that, none of that. None of that, please. Your business is your own. Okay. Can't access my map. And I did notice, I've never noticed this. Whenever I went to that new area, it gave me the option of summoning again. Usually it completely locks you out. Okay, my f come on. I'm trying to get far enough away to where I can actually access my map so I can tell where it is I need to go. All right. Uh, no, I need to stay on this. I just need to keep going down that main road. That's what it was. I got distracted by Big Giant Man, but I actually do need to go this direction. But I don't need to go down... No? Yes, well, uh, hold on, I'll just teleport over here. Th th this game, if you ever wonder why would Dark Souls need a map, this game needs a map. Like, wow, does it need a map? Also, these little statues, come on, come on, come on. Uh, these statues, that little whatever it is, Hunched over naughty man with the weird face, maybe related to the maidens that we discussed. Uh, whenever you interact with them, it just shows you the location of a catacomb, basically, like an underground lair. Guide and gatekeeper for those returning to the roots. So, the, I guess the great tree roots, those are to show you exactly where they have been uncovered. Also, if you drag a giant over to one of them, they are capable of breaking them. Which allows you to uh, collect the goodies inside, which I think are upgrade materials, if I remember correctly. I don't know if they reform, so maybe if they're broken, they're just broken forever. Also, notice that these guys have also the same weird fucked up feet. Actually, not the same. They have very similarly fucked up feet. Maybe they're draconic in origin. We have heard about weird dragon people, but I don't know anything about them. But they have three main toes, and then they have one little side digit, which is kind of unusual. Which is not like our blacksmith friend. The blacksmith friend had an obviously, like, human-looking foot that had just been really badly fucked up. It looked more like primate, in a way. Okay this way. We continue on. Because it is my hope, my aspiration, to actually get to the very end to the entrance to the, uh, the Golden City. To the, to the, at least the, uh, elevator sort of area where you can, uh, deploy the, the two little medallion pieces. Which we don't have yet, but I do know where they are. And again, ooh, big crab. Let's avoid that. And again, the entire point of doing this is just to showcase just how crazy it is that you can go anywhere, do anything, collect whatever you want at the start of the game. It doesn't have to be the same playthrough every time. Here's another one of those Mariners. I remember the name. You can see how my brain works. Like, it's, it's so easy for me to forget, like, someone's name and then just remember it easily. Like, the, five minutes later. 
This is how my brain is. It doesn't work very well. Okay, wanted to get past him without being seen. Now, if I can remember... I am so glad that I've done this once. How much of Naughty Boy should erupt. Yes, Naughty Boy Eruption. That's the name of a film I starred in that you shouldn't have. <laughs> uh, okay. Alright, here's another thing to show off. Notice there's a giant glowing painting over here. You might be wondering, what's that giant glowing painting? You're not going to get sucked inside of it, are you? No. Uh, this is a place where I guess they just reuse concept art. I don't know. It, it doesn't really look like concept art exactly. I wonder if they made these specifically. Actually, you know what this looks like? It looks like a screenshot from the game. Except with a lot of the... Like some of the rendering rules changed and then they applied some sort of filter on top of it. Like a Photoshop filter. That's what it actually looks like. But you get this resurrection painting. You can find these paintings through the world. I've never actually looked at one of these little painting things. But I think it's like near the very... Here it is, yeah. Let me look at one of these. Yeah, these are like tutorial guides. Okay. Resurrection painting. Work of a wandering artist. Reminiscence of a painting titled Resurrection. What? It's not reminiscent of a painting. It is reminiscence. Shouldn't it be like a painting of remin... remin <laughs> a painting of reminiscence. Oh my god. It's happening. Title Resurrection. Reminiscence. This painter is said to have captured the landscape seen during the last moments of those welcomed into death's embrace. Hmm. Oh, so like he visits where people are dying and then paints whatever it is that they're looking upon. The soul of the painter and the vestiges of the dead's last moments can be discovered by visiting the location depicted even now. Oh, so like, actually go to that place because that's, that, that's like that little cemetery thing that was just nearby, which I will not be doing just now. But it's something to bear in mind. Because we're approaching like two hours and I don't want this to be like th a three hour LP part. Okay. This one, yeah. The areas are divided up in the very interesting ways. And I gotta get this skull, it might be death. Cause see like this area, you cannot get to this area very easily. It is just like here. Every so often there will be like a, a slope in a very specific part that you can access that will allow you to proceed. But otherwise, it is a pain in the ass to get around. Which is how I like it. What the fuck is that thing? That looks like a bomb on wheels. Is it a traveling merchant? Or is it something that will kill me? That's a guy in there that I can target. <laughs> Alright, they're doing something. What they are doing, I don't know. But it has a crazy face, and there's a tumbleweed. And he's just pushing over trees. Oh, he hit a tree. He's got to get out and verify the insurance. Oh, no. Oh, he's coming. Okay. Looks like he has a cannon out the front of that thing's mouth. Oh, oh, he sees me. He doesn't much care for me. Let's just move on from here. All right, Vladimir Vesputin back there is uh, none too happy to see me. <laughs> Vesputin. You better not be disputing my cannon. Okay. Uh, not this way. Not this way. I should just be looking at my compass. That's what it's there for. Which you cannot see if you turn your HUD off like a goober. Because the game's so pretty, I just need to see it all the time. So beautiful. 
Okay. Now I'm checking my map a lot. Because one, bad man, bad man, did not see other bad man. I was looking at this bad man. Oh, he has kind of a pretty face, though. Now, since it's here, I'll use it. Because the last shrine was quite a bit away. Wait, what was that? Oh, those are my... Ugh. It's not that many of them, but I kind of need those right now. Yep, kind of need those. But I'm checking my map a lot. Because not only a bad man, but also because the method of actually getting to the next area is incredibly obtuse. And is very, very dangerous. Yeah, almost there. Come on. Come on, horsey. Horsey's up all. Hello. Hello, angry... Angry Russian helmet tank. This game is kind of weird sometimes. There's lots of... There's lots of weird enemies. There is your standard fare, just... You know, like, zombie man. Like, sure. Like, zombie man is there. Zombie Man is around. Like, good old Hollows, Standard Fair. That's there. Jesus, that is very, very accurate. And he was on top of that right away. Um, but there's also, like, lots of really bizarre enemies. Okay, there we go. Alright, so what I actually want to do is there are some, like, tombstones that are, like, over here that I can use to fall down. But in order to get over there, I think I'm gonna have to go here, then up here. I made the mistake of going over to the Erd Tree location the first time I came through here. And it was a pain in the backside. I hope I can actually survive getting through this area. Because this is not what I used last time. Looks like he hit a wall. So I should be okay on that front. Unless he turns back around. Ooh. Yeah, I've never been through this area. Don't much like the look of this. Whoa, video game. Come on. Shit. Shit, 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 shit. Where the hell am I? Let's just go in a direction. Well, that's lovely. Caught me right around the corner. Actually, I think that's exactly where I came into. I don't I don't really know. Also, should not laugh into the mic. That creates peaks that make it impossible to level my audio. Whoops. Well, that's a ways away. That is quite a ways away. Wow, I actually lost progress doing that. I'm not teleporting back, I'm just veering back around like that. Well, I'm very far away from where I was. But that's okay. I'll keep going until I reach the point that I want, because it's actually very close. Also, the wolves are very big. Look how big and fluffy he is. It looks like the wolf would actually be very pleasant to hold. I might just hug the wolf. But they do not care for hugs. They care only for bite. They care for bite and meat. Something that I wanted to mention with Alexander, if you remember Alexander, the pot man. Where the hell am I? Am I going backwards? Where the hell am I? I am going backwards. How'd that happen? Uh, Alexander the Pot Man. Is that he does seem to be filled with meat, which could be a thing. 
Wait, where, what the... Oh, I'm d really far back. What the fuck? Oh, I went the completely wrong direction. Oh, it's because the last one I rested at. Okay. I don't have any other ones, do I? No, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, video game, could you... What are you doing? Oh, there it goes. No, it's just really lagging out. Okay. Okay, so maybe it wasn't as close as I had promised. No way, I'm going south again because it looks like it's north. It is... That looks like the way to go, so I kept going that direction. Why does that point you facing the wrong direction anyways? Well, no, you would teleport here to do stuff, to be fair, so... They are generally pretty good about that. Some bonfire locations... Some bonfire locations are absolutely insane. Uh, the most famous one probably is one that I've already tweeted about, and people have already been making WebMs of it and making fun of it. You remember in Dark Souls 3 how there is a, uh, a boss called Dragon Slayer Armor? And... After you defeat him... Of course, because FromSoft, they leave a bonfire right there where you defeat the boss. And then you walk forward a little bit. And there's another bonfire. And you can actually stand on one bonfire and look and see the other one. Like, it's actually that bad. This game has its own version of that. And you can, like... You can't physically stand and look directly at them. Yeah, it was going backwards. But they are so incredibly close that you could run between three of them. It's not just two, it's three this time. Come on. There we go, okay. You can, you can run between three of them within the space of, like, one minute. Because there's one before a boss, then the boss drops one, and then right after that, it puts another one, like, right where, uh, the new air the area starts. Completely unreasonable. I have no idea why they did that. But they did it. That's how it works. Okay, maybe not go through the diddly-diddly area there. Or maybe do it anyways. Maybe go up here, then fall off. Maybe. Because I said the last time I did this, I actually took the far eastern approach and went up to where the Erd Tree was and just kind of got lost and ended up wandering back around until I got to the point where I could actually proceed. Which was not great. I did, did not really care for that experience. And I was trying to avoid it this time, too. But... Different butts for candy and nuts. And something, something. We all have a Merry Christmas. Alright. Let's try to go over here. I try to avoid these cliff facings because they usually will just end in death. Uh, one thing that I will say about this playthrough is in my prior playthroughs, it was quite easy for me to fight some dudes, wander forward, find something to talk about, Go forward some more, like see, see what I mean, and fight some more dudes, and then uh, do some more talking. That was the format, right? And it was very conducive because, come on, because of the way that the games were designed. Now. You can hear the source of the problem. That is in precision and range. That's pretty nuts. And unfortunately, that's the way I gotta go. Unless I want to go the Erd Tree route again. You know, in hindsight, maybe the Erd Tree route wasn't that bad. 
Uh, but this game, as you can see, because fuck, let me do this. This game is a lot more involved, and there's the the pacing of the areas is not laid out. You can go in here, or you can do anything. Most of the time that you're doing an area, you're doing like one little section, and then there's big stretches where you're doing absolutely nothing except for like wandering around, just like farting about. So the the portions where you're actually talking about like lore significance or anything are actually not that clear. You sort of have to wait till you get to a major area to do it. Like this group of sheep? Or goats, whatever they are. Not lore important. Nothing important. Uh, how do I go about doing this? There might be a... And by the way, yes, I know that I have not looked at my Lucerne yet, even though I got it. I was going to save that for the very end. There we go. Which is looking further and further away every moment. Okay. So if we take this side, maybe it won't be as bad. Because this is what I did last time. Because this part of the map does not have insane hyper archers. It does, however, have giant hulking bears that are none too happy to see me. That are just generally angry about life. Yep, they just... they don't care for most things. And they run very fast. And they also can roar so loudly that they fire hypersonic beams from their mouths. Yeah, that's the thing that they do. I don't like it, but it's something I have to deal with. And this is the wrong way, because I remember that this dude is down here. I don't know what this dude's deal is, but he's like glowing gold, and it looks like he's being engulfed in lightning. So, the last time I saw him, I'm doing what I'm doing now. I just turn around and, you know, just kind of left the area. I decided that I had had quite enough. Yep. This is the same experience as last time. This is the exact thing that I was trying to avoid. And there's that stupid fucking bear. How the hell did I do this? Unfortunately, this idiot followed me so deeply into this area. Please don't notice me. I really don't have to deal with you. Yes, okay. I remember trying, desperately trying to use that to get up, which did not work. And then I got to this, which also looked like it could be used to get up, but could not. Instead, I had to go this way. Which leads me to... The thing that looks... Oh, by the way. I love my tablet. Like, I actually said that <laughs> as I was coming through. Think carefully. I refuse. Not now. Maybe later. But I saw this statue and it's like, he just looks so happy with his little tablet thing. My tablet. Also, game, please. Oh my god. But you will notice big weird thing moving around the legs. I have no idea what that's about. This one at least does not have a bell on it. But it ha is, however, very pissed off that I'm here. So the sooner I can get away with this thing, the better. I've not been killed by it yet, and I do not much care to be. If you do stay near it, though, it will try to crush you. Okay. This is how I did it. I'll grab this hits here. Arteria leaf. There, there are things trying to murder me right now. Just to be mindful of that. Okay. Now there should be... There should be somewhere around here. There's another one of those things down here. There's actually quite a few of those littered around. 
The first one you see is supposed to be in the southern area. Here we are, tombstones. This is the ticket. This is how we get down here. There might be some other way of doing this, but I do not know of it. Also, I'm just realizing now, I don't have a waypoint of any kind anywhere near here. So I'm going to be extremely vigilant in what I'm doing. Nothing down there. Well, there is, but it's too dangerous. The thing that worries me the most is the fact that my frame rate keeps dipping so badly. But if I look straight down, not only will I not have to worry about heights, because heights don't exist when you look straight down, but also it will calm down the game engine from preventing it from loading things that will kill me. All right, here we are. Okay. Now, if I remember correctly, there is a bonfire somewhere, like, right around here. So that's where we are going to next. If we manage to get to that, then we will be A-OK. -okay. Because the place that we're trying to get to is just right around the corner. Can't miss it. It's just right there. As long as we don't get killed by any large men riding horses that do not care for us being alive, we'll be okay. But this is the experience I actually enjoy in games. Of being places where I'm not meant to be and just barely surviving the process. Yes, I think it was over here. Because it's usually in ruins. Yes. Behold. Lost grace discovered. And also since we're inside one of these little temple things. Sacred tear. Have we read this yet? Let's read that. I don't know where it is. Uh Sacred Tear, here we go. Blessing of the Earth Tree, worship in the churches of all lands. So apparently, I'm guessing this includes places that are not in the video game that people come from. This is but a faint vestige. Increase the potency of the blah blah blah. During the age of the Erd Tree, these tears were used to spread the faith. For theirs was once a certain, for theirs was once a certain blessing. That's incredibly vague. The tears of these things gave a very certain blessing. All right. Golden Seed, the other thing used to increase an, uh, a flask. A golden seed found at the base of an illusory tree. So, it's not really a tree, it's like light that presumably is linked to the Erd Tree that forms the shape of a tree, I guess? When the Elden Tree was shattered, these seeds flew from the Erd Tree, scattering across the various lands as if life itself knew that its end had come. So, the Erd Tree is seen as being, like, Yggdrasil, that it's the source of all life. And I guess when the Elden Ring was shattered, that somehow also did something to the Erd Tree, I'm still not clear what. And whenever that happened, it flung all these things all over the place, and it's trying to repopulate itself, I guess. Or they're just illusions of what used to be. A smithing Stone. There's actually, I think, five levels of these horrible things. And unlike previous games where you could upgrade a weapon to a maximum of plus 15, in this game, it can go up to plus 25. And it took me... I still have not gotten above plus 4. It is really difficult. I think that once you get to the area that I'm trying to get to, that's when the rune amount goes way up, and that's whenever the amount of uh, upgrade materials goes way up. I think. And that is one of my general problems with the way this game is designed. Because you can do what I'm doing now, and you can go anywhere, at any time, for the most part. A problem with that is that then you have to design the game so that everything can be completed at more or less the same time. It, like Breath of the Wild had this problem with its, uh, its trials and stuff all over the place. And it's, uh, you know, like the shrines. Because you could do any one of them at any point. 
so all of them had to be designed to be completable at the very start of the game. So once you completed, like, one of them, then the rest of them were fairly simple. Like, there was almost nothing to any of them. So a lot of them just felt like a waste of time after a while. And that, that this game sort of has that problem. Not as bad, though. Uh, because of, there is scaling between enemies, but you will just routinely, accidentally one-shot bosses. And then, uh, like, in the next... Like, a few steps over, come across a boss that just steamrolls you and you have no chance against. It's very strange. Okay. Sony Smith running a shard, a shard found in plenty. Not really. Uh, up to plus three. Smithing stone is found throughout the lands between, and mining galleries built to excavate it can be found everywhere. Not exactly true. It could be better. Could be worse. Okay. But now we are going here. So it says right there. It says right fucking here. Now we can't get in this part, but we will be here. And the next part will probably be me actually gathering those things. Shit! That was not there last time. What the fuck is that? Let's not do whatever that was. Didn't know that was there. I've never actually seen that. Apparently a catapult. Just chillin'. I see what I mean about the horse. As long as you're out of combat, it'll just come back. You don't actually need to expend a, a flask. So let's just stay over here. Oh, one of these assholes. I don't think that was actually him. I think it was another thing. It's still, dick! Also, that knight has a glowing weapon. I don't care for that. Let's leave this area post-haste. They say post-haste because you hurry, and then afterwards... You're there. <laughs> I don't know why that was funny. I guess because it was stupid. My sense of humor revolves a lot about... There are two things I think are funny. Usually, one are things that are stupid, like just overtly dumb. And the second is mockery, like just really making fun of something. Like I remember uh, in one of the AVGN episodes, Angry Video Game Nerd, uh, the Superman 64 one, when he was talking about Superman flying through the rings and then Superman's punches... Like, did you know there's combat in this game? And then it shows Superman doing the punches. And then James, like, green screened himself and superimposed himself next to Superman doing his combo. And he's like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Doing these, like, really, you actually have to see it, like, really gestural, moronic looking, like, mocking uh, versions of punches. And I remember laughing at that a pretty long time. So here's a ghost. He can't get in either. It's there somewhere. Another path leading back to the foot of the Erd tree. It is true. An ancient tunnel. I've actually been in that ancient tunnel. The problem with the tunnel, and notice, by the way, this ghosty also has little bitty ghostly mushrooms or something growing up around him. So even the ghosts, I don't know, maybe mushrooms used to be here, and the image you're seeing is like of the past, or he is also somehow being affected by the Erd Tree, and you're just seeing like life around him trying to exist, despite the fact that he is no longer like alive, he's just a spirit. By the way, he has not returned to the Erd Tree just yet. Maybe he's like stuck into a, a loop. Whereas the person he was here trying to get to the Erd Tree, which is what you're, you're supposed to use this for. But then he realized what we're about to realize of, oh, there's no way for me to get up here. We need the two uh, items that we're going to be getting next time. The Grand Left of Dectus, whatever the fuck Dectus is. But you come up to here and then you interact and then the elevator go up. But we can't do that right now. So I guess that guy down there had this happen. 
And then he got stuck into this loop where he was like, I need to get to the Erd Tree, but then he died for whatever his reasons. And now as a ghost, he's still like, I need to get to the Erd Tree, because as a ghost, he also needs to return so that he can, I guess, reincarnate or whatever, how that works in this setting. But he can't do either. Okay, but now as promised, remove that. Let's turn time, baby. I gotta level up strength while I'm off camera. While I'm off camera, I'm gonna be doing a lot of wandering around, leveling up. Ugh, I was supposed to be that boss. Shit. Shit. I wanted to beat that boss because there, there's a very specific area that you can farm. Maybe I can get there without it. I don't know. Okay. Lucerne. This pole arm features a hard, sharpened beak like spike attached to its head, designed to pierce armor. It also has a hammer head that, for some reason, FromSoft really doesn't like acknowledging. It also has a spear head that it also does not like to acknowledge. The design mainly is a thrusting weapon. Fucking finally. They finally realize that it's a spear. The Lucerne is a spear that just so happens to have a hammer and a, a beak attached to it. Like, it just so happens to have that. It is a spear. It's a thrusting weapon. Its long handle can be utilized to get around enemy's guard with a sideward sweeping attack. That's not exactly what it was used for, but whatever. Okay. Lucerne has, like, my favorite weapons are a Warhammer, and uh, Lucerne kind of goes along with that because it, all, it also is re really cool. Same uh, degree of functionality. I really like the fact that it has all this utility in it. Piercing, like it's a spear, a piercing weapon that also has the beak, which is used to like, it actually is used to like pry apart plates or to try to pierce through mail. Uh, so it's used as a, like you can't, if someone's on the ground, you can't take your spear and like hold it in such a way that you can drive it into the ground. Uh, that's what the beak is for. You, like, take it and you overhand swing it onto someone's body. And hopefully that will pierce the mail or whatever it is and get to their heart. Or, uh, alternatively, you could use the spearhead and, like, get into their visor or something like that. Also, the... Yeah, the hammer that you can see here... Looks a little bit too exaggerated, honestly. Like, the model... Like, that hammer is way too exaggerated. Uh... But there is, like, those little prongs there in real life. But uh, they're not supposed to be that exaggerated. Because actually having it not be a flat surface actually does distribute the force of the impact a little bit better. Uh, but that is also supposed to be used against plate armor. Like, you swing that into someone's chest, they're going to feel it really hard. You can actually break someone's bone through. Like, if you hit someone, if you hit someone's arm with a hammer like that, it actually can break their bones through the plate. Which does not sound believable, but actually does happen. Well, not anymore, obviously. No one's <laughs> nowhere is played anymore. But anyways, Lucerne. Really like Lucerne. This is his move set. So it's basic move shit. Move shit. It's move shit. Uh, its move set should be that its R1 is a thrusting attack. It is not. So they screw that up again. Uh, its R2 is this now. In the past, it was a silly helicopter spin. I'm so glad they got rid of it. But it's basically just a stronger version of what its R1 is. However, now, its backstep is finally a thrusting attack. It was this. Like, the, the running attack used to be this. But running. So thank god, finally, now, there is a thrusting attack on this goddamn thing. After years of having a spear in their games that just so happens to have a little beak on it that they were obsessed with, now finally it is actually used like a spear, at least in some small degree. <sighs> and I just hit Y to try to switch to two-handed because my brain is still doing that. Two-handed, same thing. Big overhand swing. Like, if they're going to do this... It should be the hammer part, because it's a big overhand, like, you're hitting someone. And same deal. So pretty much the same whether it's one-handed or not. Okay. Alright. 
But notice that its damage type is standard in Pierce. I forget what the hell standard is supposed to be. Because I don't have enough weapons to showcase this. There is Pierce, Slashing, and also uh, Strike, I think is how they name it. Yeah, Strike, Strike. Shield has it, Strike. But there's also Standard, whatever the hell Standard is supposed to be. But a Lucerne in real life would have the... It would have Piercing and uh, Strike. I guess you could also describe it as having Slashing if you actually use that beak the right way, but I wouldn't think so. So it should, it should be Strike and Pierce, but it isn't for whatever its reasons. But this is the thing I'm going to be trying to use for a while. I say trying because I'll probably get sick and tired of it eventually. Also, I want to go down to that camp that we just started with. Ooh, like, so nice here. Look how clean and crisp I am. Uh, I want to go back down to that camp that we started at and actually farm the war pick there. And I want to try that out too. So I'm going to be off screen gathering runes, buying a bunch of shit. And then whenever we come back next time, I'll have a whole bunch of playful little things to discuss. And I'll probably have accidentally triggered a cutscene somewhere that I wasn't supposed to, and I will apologize for it. This is exactly what will happen. See you guys next time. I hit the I hit the old button for the gestures that is not there anymore. Which one should make be my goodbye gesture? Ring again? Yeah, I'll do ring again because the last time I did the ring, it slowed down the bandy cam capture for some reason. Let's see if that happens again. Ring. Ring. See you guys next time. You can put your hands down. There you go. Goodbye, everyone.